Hey everyone, today I'm working on a Hyundai i30 2018. Got the custom concern of multiple warning lights on dash uh, regarding the ABS, traction control, and uh, autonomous emergency braking. So let's start the car and let's see what we've got on. So we're having collision warning light, ABS light, traction control light. Um, and that's about it. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. All right, so um, let's hook up the scanner and let's see what fault codes we've got on. And uh, let's go from there. All right, so fault code stored at this point. We've got active fault on the multifunction camera, which is the one in the windscreen. We've got historic fault on the ABS airbag. What we'll be doing will be um, erasing all the fault codes. Right, and let's uh, turn the ignition off and then let's turn it back on and let's just uh, rescan it again and see what kind of uh, fault codes are still active. Right, so we've got ABS fault, we've got a motor electrical fault on the ABS unit. Right, so as you can see, we have left the ABS motor electrical, which is a historic fault code. So let's go back, let's go to live data and let's have a look at some uh, information. All right, ABS. Let's have a look in here. All right, you got engine speed. All right. Let's see if the wheel speed sensor are all working as they should. Wheel speed sensors are all okay, they do register speed. Right, so live data, everything, everything looks all right. Right, let's um, put ignition on only. Let's go to actuation test and let's see if we can, um, uh, where is it, actuation test, there we go. Let's see if we can hear that motor working. So we want to ABS. Because if the motor doesn't work, obviously there will be no uh, ABS on. So we've got motor, two seconds. So let's see if we can hear that. No, nothing there. It's time to uh, pull a wiring diagram out. Let's have a look at this ABS unit. So I pulled out the DTC information and possible causes, damage or poor connector connection, defect HECU, defect HECU fuse, poor HECU ground, poor battery, defective, defective motor FET, parking brake shoe gap is excessive, not the case. Anyway, so reset condition, turn ignition, switch off and on. So now I've got the engine running, so if I'm going to go back to my diagnosis, oh come on, okay, I'm going to select ABS only, and if I erase the full code without cycling the ignition on and off, then it should the fault not appear again. But once I cycle the ignition on and off, it will just uh, come back straight away, straight away. So let's put the ignition on now only. Let's go into the fault code there. And let's do erase. Okay. As you can see, it's clean now. 
let's do it in the wrist scan and it came back on and it comes all as a history fall code so we need to pull that wire diagram out okay so here's the wire diagram and you can see here we've got our uh, two fuses 40 amp which are gonna feed the uh, fat here in the motor and we've got our 30 amp fuse is gonna fit the uh, valves and then we've got the ignition on fuse here which is a 10 amp fuse and we've got our two ground there so if we go into the connector now we can see there we've got pin 13 and 38 which are both grounds 1 and 25 which are uh, continuous um, power supply and the pin 32 which is as oh, this is spelled wrong 23 but this is 32 because 43 32 and 31 and we should have ignition on power supply there and if you remember and the fault code uh, possible causes this says the way this unit will know if the fault uh, is there is by measuring the voltage coming here so if, if this MOSFET will not work there will be no voltage output here so let's go to the car now and let's check the voltage here, here, here and obviously the ground if that they are all okay right we're back in the car now my phone went a bit uh, berserk but anyway we'll skip that so we got the connector out here I put in my two trusty bulbs 21 watts and uh, I've got the yellow wire on the valve power supply I've got the red wire on the motor supply and this white white here with a specific pin it is on the ignition on so if I'm gonna put the ground on both them the both bulbs should light up very bright so let's see that so that's very bright and the other ground see there I'm switching ground and the bulbs are lighting uh, very bright which is great and now I'm gonna take both bulbs out I'm gonna put ground in there and uh, with ignition on I'm gonna see if I got power supply here as well and as you can see I've got power supply there as well and I'm happy to say that both uh, grounds uh, supplies are okay so I can't say there's any fault within the wiring obviously I can check the uh, network but I'm not uh, concerned about the network because I can communicate with the module I can see live data in it so I know there's good communication there so there's no point uh, wasting time on that so at this point I can only say that this unit here the motor or the MOSFETs are gone and it will require uh, a new unit to be fitted, coded and then uh, retest. So uh, I'll do that now and then I'll come back with the video with the uh, final result. Right, so we've got the new ABS unit, just came, very simple to fit, only got four pipes and two on the side here. So make sure you, you match the pipes, you can see there, rear left, rear right, front left and uh, front right and obviously the two pipes come in there so it's very easy to fit nothing complicated so i'm not going to worry about making a video about how to fit this one and the most important thing you need to do before taking off the old one you have to go if you still can communicate with it obviously but in our case we can we need to go into uh, software management and we need to download the configuration uh, from it so the way you do it you go to abs you can do it any diagnostic machine has this obviously um, and just go to variant coding there backup and input so we're going to do a backup for now because we got the old one still on the car there you go so this is just to tell you what is this for click ok and then you go here backup or input so we're going to do a backup and then says backup has been completed click the ok button then ignition off and carry out the ecu replacement work so we're going to click OK, we're going to turn off the ignition and we're going to replace the uh, unit. Right guys, fitted the new unit, now uh, it's time to do the backup, variant coding backup. So you're going to click on that one there and click run and then we will uh, going to upload the configuration from the old unit all right okay and then we got input here click on that one it says the function has been completed turning it off 
for wait for about two seconds and then turn ignition back on. So we're gonna turn the ignition off now and uh, we will be waiting for uh, 20 seconds. Also, this will this will not be uh, the only thing we need to do. We're gonna have to calibrate the um, G sensor axis and everything. Uh, you don't have to remember any of this because once you're gonna scan for fault codes, it will uh, actually tell you. I'll, I'll show you in a second. It's way easier like that than uh, trying to remember all the steps. So let's say 20 seconds have passed. Let's put the mission on. Let's click OK. All right, that's all done. So if we go now to uh, fault code scan, wait for the scan to finish. And while this is uh, scanning, you can see here on the dash the ABS light is gone off. You only got the trash control light uh, on. That's because obviously you're gonna have to calibrate the uh, sensors. But as you can see, ABS lights already gone off. So let's uh, let this to finish and um, we'll, I'll show you how, what's next. All right, scan is complete. So as you can see, we've got 12 fold codes now, but don't worry about that. That's not because all this system requires some sensors. So if you click on the ABS now, uh, on the fold codes, you have some active fold codes there. So we got the longitudinal G sensor not calibrated. So that needs to be done uh, now. So we're going to go back to our software management. Again, you can do this with any kind of tablet. I have the luck to have access to a genuine tablet. But you can do it with launch, with um, top down, snap on, whatever. So we're going to click on ABS ESP here again, and we've got. Longitudinal G sensor calibration. So you're gonna click on that one. Obviously, have your engine off, so you need to switch on. Uh, steering wheel needs to be straight, tires, pressure, everything. So should, the figure should be basically straight. And just don't move in the car. Just click run. It will take a, just a few seconds. And once that is done, we'll uh, erase the fault codes, and everything should be nice and clear. Right, so this is the condition that needs to be um, uh, met in order for this to work. We already done them all, so let's click OK. As you can see there, complete. Turn ignition off for 10 seconds and then back on. So let's turn ignition off. Let's clear the keys out so it doesn't. Oh my god, so noiseless. Anyway, right, 10 seconds, we've got five now. And then we'll uh, see what what lights we got on the dash. So let's put the ignition on now and let's see what's left. As you can see, no more ABS light, no more um, traction control light. So let's click OK here. All right, that's all done. So now let's go back to our full code search. Let's do the same full code again and everything should just go uh, straight to uh, history fault codes. I'm going to scan all the system again, because I like to, to make sure every, none of it have any fault codes. Right, fault code complete. So, let's see. Everything here should be in uh, history, so I'm going to click on the they have 12 fault codes there, and you can see all of them are historic fault codes. So we'll go back, we'll erase everything. That should take about 10-15 seconds. And then we will switch off ignition and we'll switch it back on and gonna do another scan. And uh, we will see if there are any fault codes that will return. We don't have it. Right, so now we're gonna do another scan. And as you can see, I've got no more fault codes present, zero DTCs, so that is great. So now I'm going to cycle ignition on and off, and uh, I will wait in about 20 seconds, and then I'm going to put ignition on, and I will uh, scan it again, as uh, I want to see if any fault codes are active, and now it's going to be initial uh, component check while cycling ignition on and off on the ABS unit and all the others. So everything's going to be all right. I'm happy to say that so everything is good. So let's put the ignition on now and let's do another scan. Obviously, the e call and the AF, which active air flap, this car and uh, this car doesn't have them, it's not fitted on this vehicle. So let's rescan it again 
and let's uh, see what are the results. So as you can see there, fall code is gone, it's completed and there are no fall codes. And also on the dash, as you can see there, it's all nice and clear. So let's start the car and uh, let's see if it stays as it should stay. Beautiful. No more AEB fall code, no more ABS light on, no more traction control line, everything's nice and clean. Right guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Hope you do find it useful and I will see you on my next video.